This video was made possible by our supporters over on Patreon. Yo, what up guys? Marin here. Thanks for checking out the video. I really appreciate it. Today's another episode of Fan Friday series where we showcase off one of your guys' decks. So today we are checking out an awesome Eldrazi and Taxes list sent to us by Angel Cruz, our very generous patron. So thank you very much to Angel Cruz for the super awesome deck. I've actually been wanting to try this deck for a while, IRL. So if you'd like to submit a deck of your own for a future episode of Fan Fridays, you can do so by leaving a comment down below or emailing me or DMing me on social media wherever I can see your comment. And you might just see your deck played on a future episode of Fan Fridays. So that's about it. Let's get right into the deck tech. Hope you enjoy. So I've actually been wanting to play this deck for a long time. It's a deck that's always interested me, so I'm happy that it was submitted for Fan Fridays. So this deck is meant to ramp out Eldrazi's really quick via Eldrazi Temple, Simeon Spirit Guide, and Gemstone Caverns, and then play no zero drops and lock down your opponent with Chalice of the Void. So it's a pretty solid strategy. We got some hate bears to support the cause, so let's check it out and hope it goes well. Starting off with the Eldrazi portion of the deck, we got Eldrazi Displacer, which is a monster against creature-based decks. Having the ability to blink your opponent's creatures every combat step makes it so annoying for them to be able to win. It makes us way in favor against those kinds of decks. Thought Not Seer is really good disruption for pretty much any deck, because it enters and exiles a card from their hand, so they're going to have to draw a second removal spell to be able to even deal with Thought Not Seer, and your other threats are going to be undealt with, especially Eldrazi Displacer is one that comes to mind. Reality Smasher is a really annoying threat as well because they have to discard a card in order to kill it and then it's got trample and haste so it's a really quick clock and it's really aggressive. Onto the taxes portion of the deck, we got Leonin Arbiter, which makes it difficult for our opponent to search their library because they have to pay an additional two mana whenever they fetch. Then we got Thalia, Guardian of Thraben. Um, in conjunction with Leonin Arbiter, Thalia makes it really difficult for our opponent to cast non-creature spells because they're going to be stuck on mana as well. And then Thalia, Heretic Cathar furthers this cause as well because our opponent's non-basic lands are going to enter the battlefield tapped, including their fetch lands, and then they're going to have to fetch out a basic because if they play a tapped fetch land, on top of the next turn, fetch it. They can't get a shock land because that will enter tapped as well. So really good land hate with this package. The next main portion of this deck is having Chalice of the Void out on turn one. So this in conjunction with Gemstone Caverns and or Simeon Spirit Guide, we can get it out Chalice of the Void. And this is really good in the meta right now because there's a lot of hand disruption, a lot of faithless looting, a lot of cantrips, and it disrupts a lot of combo decks as well. And finally, our spells. We can't play one drop removal spells because Chalice of the Void will counter them, so we got Dismember. We can pay one mana for Dismember, but it is not a one drop. Uh, then we got Warping Whale, which can exile a creature with power and toughness one or less. Or we can counter a sorcery so we can deal with board wipes or things like Anger of the Gods. And then we can also put out a 1-1 one, one Eldrazi Scion that can sack for mana, helps us ramp quickly into Reality Smasher if we're trying to get there. We got a total of 25 lands, that is a lot, but we do have a lot of tech lands like Ghost Quarter, Shefit Dunes, Eldrazi Temple helps wrap out those Eldrazis, and we also got Cavern of Souls to name Eldrazi and or whatever else we needed to, and then we got Horizon Canopy to crack and draw cards. Onto the sideboard, we got a couple copies of Declaration in Stone just to exile some creatures. We got Stony Silence to stop artifact decks. Rest in peace because graveyard decks are a menace right now. Phyrexian Revoker, pretty good against Tron. Uh, three copies of Tokotli Honor Guard. Now this one you don't see too often, but it is actually really good against the five color humans decks because pretty much they are an enter the battlefield dot deck. And then we got Ratchet Bomb to be able to sweep away multiples. We got a couple copies of Warships so that we don't die against creature based decks and burn. And then a Sorcerer's Spyglass for the same reason of Phyrexian Revoker to stop things like Tron and Blue Eye Control because it stops like their Jaces and Teferis and such. So that's about it. I'll get the stream started and I'll see you in the first round. We got another game here and we won the die roll. We get to be on the play. And that is a turn two chalice, but we're stuck on one land, so that's not going to do. Let's take our London Mulligan. And yes, let's keep that one. And let's throw back a Thalia Heretic Cathar. Or let's throw, let's throw away one of our Displacers. Start on a Ghost Quarter and pass. See what our opponent's up to. Wolf 2 2 2 2. Forest Arbor Elf. Okay. Alright, let's start on Leon and Arbiter so that they don't fetch. And then we can go Thalia Heretic Cathar, make their 
wooded foothills enter tapped and whatnot. Oh no, do they have turn two Garrick? Blue. Okay, so they're a Hydroid Crisis deck. Are they like blue green Kiora? Elves? Oh, they're 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 coiling oracle elves. All right. Well, go to combat. Attack for two. I can't actually ghost quarter them here because they could just untap and pay. Do I just wait and leave it up? You know what? I'm greedy. They pay for Arbiter. Oh, are they Primal commanding us here? Mwan Voli. Okay, that sucks. Alright, Gemstone Caverns. Let's go Displacer. You know, maybe I should have went Thalia if it would stop their Tooth and Nail. But they can't they can't pay they can't afford a tooth and nail and pay for arbiter. So it's fine. But if they horn it queen, then we're gonna have a problem. It's gonna take a while to eat through all of those with displacer. And flickering a hornet queen is not really an option. Yeah, they're one short of being able to pay for arbiter and tooth and nailing. Now we're getting primal commanded. <laughs> London unfun again. London unfun again. That's Oh, the Hornet Queen. I knew we were getting Hornet Queen. Yo. Phil, thank you for the tier one sub three months in a row. Appreach, appreach. How what how what a we're not going to beat a Hornet Queen. What do we do? What do? What am I supposed to... What am I supposed to do? Alright, well, I'm going to have to eat through all those Hornets. It's going to take a minute. Opponent's going to get to Hornet Queen here. Alright, well, we'll slowly but surely get through it. Oh, they enter tapped. They enter tapped. That's good. Wait, what, are they, what else do they have? Replicate. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> what is this? What is going on? Well, blink a token. I mean, it's gonna happen. Alright. Well, Thalia. Get in there. Alright, maybe with the Simeon Spear Guide we can catch our opponent off guard and barely get lethal? Question mark? Maybe they're just going to swing all out and leave up like two Hornets and then I'm going to Simeon Spear Guide blink one. That's how rough dryers roll. I don't know what a rough dryer is, but I assume I'm not one. Oh, rough riders? Stop, drop, scoop them up, open up shop. Is that a reference to something? I'm very dim when it comes to internet memes. I'm not really a meme person. Are they progenitor mimicking their Hornet Queen? 
Is that what's happening here? It's a rap song. I don't listen to rap. I'm a metalhead, and then I also listen to folk. All right, bounce an insect. They plowed us under. Do we get to choose the order? Uh, planes first, and then gemstone caverns. All right. Sure. They got in for five. We get our caverns back. Get in with everything. Oh, that's a token. I could bounce that. All right. I could have taken less damage. Oh, they're so smart. They're so smart putting this on here. Putting the real Hornet Queen on the Displacer so they know if I want to blink that to save Displacer, they would get more Hornets. They're smart. All right, well, we're going to blink the token one. I like their deck. I've played lots of decks like this before. I think my favorite variant of this deck that they're playing is definitely the Tooth and Nail and Devotion deck we played on the channel. The deck we literally called it Tooth and Nail and Devotion. It's from the early 2000s. Ah. Uh, does it really say scoop them up in there, though? That sounds like a magic thing. Our dudes have first strike. They're still going to be pretty potent threats. We might actually have a chance still. They're down to zero cards left. I mean, yeah, keep attacking. If they want to kill my Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, like, we got a second one. And the first strike's super good against Death Touchers. Oh, shut them down, open up shop. Oh, yeah, see, look at that. Look at that. We got the back of Thalia for you. We got the back of Thalia for you. Did I just say it Australian? The Thalia? They want to say the Thalia. No, we got the Thalia. Yeah, every time they, they would end a word and end a word with a, uh, like Thalia, they would say Thalia. That's how an Aussie would say it. You think the Thalia beat down plan is pretty good? Oh, they surged yet another Hornet Queen. Or a Thrag Tusk. Don't tell me it's a Thrag Tusk. Don't be a Thrag Tusk. They can cast a uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, Ewit for Hornet Queen. But the but the creatures intertapped. They got back replicate. Oh, they're replicating Eternal Witness here. Oh, they're not. Why? Why are they not replicating? Oh yeah, because they're intertapped. Well, the Stalia Herod to Cathar. Whatever you play, it's coming in tap, boy. Yeah. All right, let's see. But OP's deck is sweet. Yeah, opponent's deck is sweet. It's super awesome. Repudiate, replicate. Super awesome card. Just three mana clone your dude. Super legit. But then, look, if the I were, say were I were to like Eldrazi displace through that or like remove it in response, then replicate would fizzle. So that's the problem with that. 
Oh, they barely live. Yeah, because of that e with they barely have enough mana. But if I top deck a dismember here, then you're dead. That sucks. They just have enough. Barely just have enough. But does this Honor Queen actually get it, though? Because my dudes have first strike. No, I don't... I, I'm not sick. I don't have the sniffles. It's just for some reason when I start talking a lot... I don't know. It just happened this week. I don't know what happened this week, but this week it's just like... Um, like, I've been very... I don't know. I just felt like... It's weird. I, I don't know why, like, I'm sniffling. I, I really don't know why, because I'm not sick. I'm not sick at all. It's just been happening. Do they have lethal? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, they have lethal. Let's see if they notice that, though. Primal Command, put a creature... They're gonna search for another creature. Yeah, I think it's time to scoop it up. They got there. I'm not gonna... I'm not beating that. Alright, on to sideboarding. Bring... Uh, worship's not good. Oh, Tokali Honor Guard for sure. Tokali Honor Guard for sure. Um, Declaration in Stone. Probably not. Ratchet Bomb. Yeah, let's bring in a Ratchet Bomb. Hit one drops. Uh, so that's it. Um, Warping Whale's good. Thalia? Guardian of Thraben? Probably not. You know what? It actually is good. Thalia Heretic Cathar? Probably not, because they don't really have any non-basics. And... They have a lot of mana to pay for Arbiter. Maybe I cut Arbiter. This placer is okay, but they have ETB effects. They're not really searching much. I guess I'll cut Arbiters. Just go for the Honor Guard shutdown. Hornets. Yeah, you remember those, uh, you remember the Hornet Nest deck where you're supposed to roast your own Hornet Nest or Blasphemous Act your own Hornet Nest? Now you can Starve Extinction your own Hornet Nest. That'd be funny. Okay, that's, uh, Ratchet Bomb for one. Sure. I'll take a Ratchet Bomb for one. Then I can also get out to Colleen. That's a really quick, uh, Thought Nuts here. That's actually a turn two thought not here if I save my uh my Simeon Spear Guide. Yeah, Horde Queen's a good dude. It's it does a really good job at keeping you alive. Depending on what decks your opponent's on, if they're on Stompy or something. Sometimes they just don't care though. Sometimes they just want overwhelming massive power. Alright, Eldrazi Temple. Ugh, do I want to play Ratchet Bomb yet? Because that would probably make them not play one drops. Uh, You know, yeah. Just just do the smart play. Just play it. Force them to not play any mana dorks. Alright, Utopia Sprawl. I'm not taking the bait. I'm not taking the bait. I, I don't think I need to use Ratchet Bomb yet. I can I can easily get a two for one off of it. My thought nuts here is not gonna trigger. But that's okay. They have so many one drops in hand right now.
You know what? I should probably crack it. I should crack it. Because the, the, the Utopia Sprawl is giving him blue mana. Alright, I'll bite. I'll bite. Alright. Throw out a blank Thought Not Seer that's not going to trigger. Wait! Opponent! I have to call you! That doesn't trigger! Okay, they obviously have information in their hand they don't want me to know. They obviously have some information they don't want me to know. What is that information? Wait, what are you guys talking about? You play Moldrotha too? I also play Moldrotha. I'll show you right now. Check this out. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. It's right here. It's it's right here, guys. Hold on. Look at that. Moldrotha. There's my Moldrotha deck. Um, although I don't like it, thinking about taking it apart, because I really don't like playing graveyard decks. I was just like, the reason I built Moldrotha, or the reason I built Yidris in the first place, is because I didn't have any black decks, and I really needed to build a black deck, because I play, uh, in Commander, I'm like, oh, I always play every color non-black, because I don't like playing black. And so I was just like, build, just do it, just build a black deck. And then I'm already thinking about taking it apart. Um, let's name human. But mostly just Memnarch. You have a, spot, a soft spot for artifacts. I do not like playing all artifacts decks. I learned my lesson in the past when I used to play my uh, my competitive mono brown um, Captain Lannery Storm deck, and it was mono. It was like almost mono rocks dude like there's so many rocks and uh my opponents would just like wipe all rocks they'd bane of progress they they would just destroy all my rocks and i would just have nothing so i learned my lesson that playing all all the rock decks or the the all the artifact decks are just very yeah vandal blast yeah that whole thing all those cards screw your day up so i learned to just like not play mono artifact decks anymore. But I want to, because I was thinking about building a Kozilek. Now, before I took Kali Underguard, I want to get this Thought Not Seer out first, but I think I'm going to take this turn off to Warping Whale, their Mana Dork. Because before we start progressing our board, it's important to first shut down their mana. Why do they always have the Utopia Sprawl? Ooh! That's a Ratchet Bomb. Heck yeah, dude. I'm, I'm in. I'm in on Ratchet Bomb here. They're going to have to find Reclamation Sage right now, or this Ratchet Bomb is going to get some value. Cozy is sweet. Yeah, Cozy is awesome. You're going to see him on the art today for this video. Or this video is going to go up on Friday, but... Alright. Monvoli. Sure. Why did they not destroy my my Eldrazi temple? That would have been a better target. Oh, look at that. Alright, Thought Knot's here. What do you got? Give me some more ramp. Silent Arbiter, Primal Command, Ewit, Acidic Slime. Well, Ewit's the only thing they can cast here, so let's take let's take that. Warping Whale hilariously can exile Silent Arbiter. Okay, that's gonna get Warping Whaled. Maybe I should have saved Warping Whale for the Silent Arbiter, because Silent Arbiter is actually really annoying now that I can't really attack into it. Oh, they found a Utopia Sprawl. 
Ooh, ghost quarter. No, 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 opponent. No blue for you. No blue for you. All right, go attacking. That Silent Arbiter is going to be a huge problem. And they found the land. Okay, I need a Reality Smasher or something. Ooh, Displacer works. Displacer works. Perfect top deck. Get in there for four. For those of you wondering why I'm not attacking with Dahlia, is because Silent Arbiter only allows one creature to attack. No more than one creature can attack each combat. That is the reason why. And opponent scoops it up. They are not going to get there through Displacer flickering their blockers. And opponent had a super sweet deck. But ours was just that much sweeter. No, I like their deck a lot. I, I'm really a big fan of those. And in Modern Horizons, if we do get um, things like... If we do get things like... Um, what do you call it? Wild Growth, it could really help those kinds of decks a lot. So I'm excited to see for, for that. But yeah. We got a game here with uh, El Jirazi and Taxes, and we get to be on the play. We got Gemstone Caverns, and I think, yes, because that's a turn one. I'm going to keep this, because... Oh, wait. Hold on. Let's turn off their draw step and stuff. Oh, no, we're on the play. We're on the play. All right. Horizon Canopy, go. Oh, wait. I was supposed to start on Temple. I'm definitely getting out Chalice first. Depending on what they're on. Let's see what they're on. Welding Jar. Okay. These decks don't really play one drops at all. They, they really don't. These uh, prison... Depends on if it's Hardened Scales Affinity, but with Spire of Ministry, I really doubt it. So, Ancient Stirrings? Okay, sure. I'll play Chalice. You know what? No, no. I still feel like Thalia is better. They hardly play one drops at all. It's just all zero drops and then two, three, four. Or not two, three, four. It's just two and three. Like, they play Bridge, um, Sword of the Meek, uh, Thopter, Foundry, Time Sieve, Whir of Invention, Welding Jar, Mox Opal. Like, I don't think Chalice of the Void is going to do much except stop Ancient Stirrings. And if they happen to play Chromatic Star. Ooh, Thalia Hair to Cathar. Alright. Get out Thalia number one. I think we should be pretty solid in this matchup. Like, we're probably going to Thought Not Seer their bridge next turn and then just leave them screwed to Thalia. And then if we can put Chalice on, like, two, I'd be happy. Moxo, Paul. And let's go Thought Not Seer, see what they are up to. Yo, uh, obviously default. Thanks for the follow. I gotta fix my notifications. See what they're on. Sorcerer's Spyglass and Snaring Bridge. Chalice of the Void of their own and Crucible of the Worlds. Okay, let's take in Snaring Bridge. Go attacking. For two. And I think this should be a pretty easy one. Watch me eat my own words, though. Today was a normal grind, not many highlights. I gotcha. Yo, what's up, Drew? How you doing? So yeah, me and me and Joakova were just talking about um, what he does. Game design. I wanted to do game design a lot when I was uh, when I was little. Um, I wanted to get into the game design because I was like playing so much video games. Like I was playing. Um, let's just play another thought nods here. Oh, I can't do that. How do I? Uh, Oh, there we go. Control-Z. I've never done that before in my entire life. Alright, I guess we're playing... We can go Arbiter Ghost Quarter. That seems solid. And put Chalice on... on uh... Oh, I couldn't put Chalice on zero. 
Um, but yeah, I kind of want to restrict their mana. Is that worth it? Or I can go Thalia Hair. Yeah, let's just go Thalia Hair to Cathar. That make a sense. Now let's go attacking. Four, six. Yeah, what's up, Angel? That is the deck. This is the deck. You hate prison decks, um, but they're not—they're not a prison deck. They—they they just have bridge. They have bridge and chalice. Yeah, I guess that makes them a prison deck. But uh, they usually don't run chalice, and they just run this as a one of hate card. Like if they stirrings and find it, and it happens to help in the in the main board, that's why they run it. It's shutting down our temple, so that's a, that's a thing. I wanted a chalice on two really bad, but um, I didn't get the land. So next turn, I'll Arbiter Ghost Quarter. That should do a thing. And I'm very familiar with Arbiter Ghost Quartering, because I've done that many times in my days of playing Modern, as I am a Death and Taxes player. I'm more of a Hate Bears player, though. Sorcerer, Spyglass, yep. They're going to name Ghost Quarter. Yeah, they're probably going to name Ghost Quarter. Bummer. Yep, they named Ghost Quarter, so Arbiter's not going to do its thing. But hopefully we can top a land for Thought Nuts here, here, so we can at least do something. Okay, there's another Arbiter. Uh, we have Lethal next turn, so I'm just going to Chalice on zero. Yeah, I'm going to Chalice on zero. So if I go like this, will it actually put Chalice on one? Nope, it's on zero. All right, well, I guess we're playing an Arbiter. Oh, they have Damping Sphere. But Chalice on zero is good. All right, they need a top deck and Ensnaring Bridge right now, go. And they didn't get it, and we got there, yay. All right, on to sideboarding. Um, Let's bring in Sorcerer Spyglass of our own, a Ratchet Bomb, a Phyrexian Revoker, Stony Silence, uh, which is kind of a Nombo with the Ratchet Bomb, but it's fine. Uh, and let's take out Dismembers. They're probably going to bring in Cymavic Thopterus, but it's whatever. Uh, Warping Whale. I don't. I honestly don't know why Warping Whale's in here. Maybe uh, maybe Angel in the chat can clarify. And I think that's it. Yeah, let's run it back like that. It's a cool career. The best part time is the best part is some days we get a board game and play for hours to study the components and the design. Oh, that's cool. I thought you meant like video games. Yeah, I, I wanted to develop video games a lot when I was a kid. I was like, I thought that'd be a really cool career. But then like, um, some of you guys don't know like you guys don't know this about me but when my biggest loves in life growing up was fireworks I was really big into fireworks fireworks intrigued me and so I was really interested in some kind of firework related career I was go going through my teen years um, but then in 2012 in 2012 when I saw the youtuber shady penguin and the king nappy I got really interested in YouTube, and yes, let's turn zero gemstone for planes, so we can get out the turn one Arbiter, which is not really going to help, but it's fine. Okay, so I could start on Spyglass and name Mox Opal. You know, I kind of want to do that slow their mana production. Like, we're not going to have a quick clock with just an Arbiter anyways. I mean, I'm in, sure. And I want to get them, I want to restrict their mana. Glimmer Void, Damping Sphere, and Staring Bridge. Uh, Ipnu Rivulet. Okay, um, we're going to name Mox Opal. Oh, wait. Does it stop mana abilities? Unless they're mana abilities. Okay, um, in that case... Alright guys, what do we name? What do we name? Um, 
Welding Jar so far is like the only target. Uh, what do they got? Thopter. We're gonna name the Thopter. Um, are they really a Thopter sword deck? Thopter. No, no. Thopter Foundry. Right? Is that is that what they're on? I'm naming Thopter Foundry. You went to your first FNM a couple weeks ago. You played against two prison decks and lost both matches. Yeah, it's really annoying. You gotta be prepared to kill Ensnaring Bridge. I make sure all my decks are prepared to kill Ensnaring Bridge, can play around Blood Moon, and can beat Tron and beat Storm, and also exile graveyards. Those are like the five or six main things that, for me, for sideboards personally. Uh, do we even have any ways to beat Ensnaring Bridge? I do not believe so. Oh no, yeah we do, we got Ratchet Bomb. We got Ratchet Bomb. Okay. But they got the stupid Welding Jar, and we only have one Ratchet Bomb. And we only have one Spyglass. Oh, but we had Stony Silence, yes. But then... But then that would make it so we can't even crack Ratchet Bomb. So, like, we have no out. We ha we can't do anything. I mean, they probably don't have an out either. What, what, what do they... What do they have for for this? Because they have to kill Stony. They, they, I mean, they got engineered explosives, and they can put engineered explosives on two, and kill Stony and kill whatever. And they're just gonna gain a billion life with their with their thing, with their what you call it. We can't win. Yo, Angel, what do I do? We can't win. Am I supposed to concede this? Like, do I have an... I'm trying to think. I don't think we have a way. We have no naturalized effects. What did we bring in? They're gonna have Psy also, and we don't have any removal. I think I'm going to concede. Yeah, I mean, I know YouTube might rage at me for this if I do have a win con, but... Let me see. Yeah, like, I, I don't... I didn't have an out. I didn't have an out to that. Because my own Stony, My own Stony shuts down my own Ratchet Bomb. And when I go to use the Ratchet Bomb, they're just going to use the Welding Jar. Yeah, I had I had nothing to do. We have no... We have no... Um... Naturalize effects. Well, that's a dud. Do I bring in Worship? Can they even beat a Worship? I don't think they can beat a Worship. They have Maelstrom Pulse, don't they? Or Assassin's Trophy? I'm gonna run it back. Hope I can just disrupt them. I need to get an Arbiter. I'm on the play now. Uh, Cavern can name Cat. And I can get a turn one... Am I supposed to keep this? I'd rather name human. This is difficult, dude. I don't even know how to play this deck. I don't even know. I just go cavern on human and then pass. And the next turn go ghost quarter pass. And the next turn top deck of land, thought not here. And then I'm so ah, I'm so flustered. I'm so flustered. I'm 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 confuzzled as heck, dude. Oh, I, this is my first time playing this deck. Bear that in mind. I'm... Um, 
I'm gonna mull. Why did I mull back to seven? I didn't have. Is wait the London Mulligans in effect? Oh man, is the London Mulligan here? Oh, dude. Okay, I can I can turn one chalice on one and zero. Is that worth it? Oh, I don't think that's going to do enough. They're just still going to go land, 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 and snaring bridge. I got them all. I got them all. Keeping it. All right, put three cards on the bottom of your library. Oh, this is so OP, dude. This is so OP. All right, put back Reality Smasher. Put back uh, Horizon Canopy. And put back... I guess Chalice. Chalice doesn't do much. Oh, this is nuts, dude. London Mulligan ain't fair. Why am I... What decks are possible now? Oh, man. I wouldn't be surprised if in any of our matches today we go up against Gorios. Because Gorios is going to be the most nuts deck with London Mulligan. Gorios with, with Serum Powder? Nuts as heck, dude. All right. Stony. Yeah, just four viable. Tron. Tron is going to be nuts also. Tron is super nuts. Infect. Infect is going to be ultra nuts. Infect just got helped. Infect is now arguably better than it was before the Gataxian Pro banning with London Mulligan. Arguably better. Elves? Definitely better. Because Elves' problem was mulliganing. Elves uh, mulligan really bad. It was one of the worst mulligan decks. But now, super good. Oh, you know what, dude? Treasure. Tre zombie hunt, dude. Zombie hunt could be a thing. Chalice on one, sure. I got no one drops. Yo, System 4200. What's up? Forgot about putting what in. Are they worrying already? Why are they worrying for two? Is it Ratchet Bomb? I mean, they can't activate Torpor Orb. Okay. Well, Thought Not Seer is not going to work, but still. I'm gonna play it. Was there no stream Monday? Yeah, there there wasn't a stream on Monday because we streamed yesterday on Tuesday, because um, we were collaborating with MTG Tavern and he couldn't do it on on Monday. And in Snaring Bridge, and that be the game, because we have no way to deal with it. All right. Well, having no way to deal with Snaring Bridge is a real problem since Thopter Thopter Were is actually becoming one of the top decks. So that be the first game. So let's go right on to the next one. We got a game here against Stahi or Stahl or Shahi, because I know we, we played against an opponent called Stahl before as S T A H L. And this is very similar. Might have been this opponent that we played against before. Well, we got another game here with. Uh, Eldrazian Taxes. Let's try to play a quick game. The other games we played have been very, very slow. Alright, this looks like a keepable hand. Let's see if the opponent uses their London Mulligan. I'm gonna keep mine. I can literally just aggressively London Mulligan until I hit Gemstone Caverns. So to get a turn one chalice. Yeah, opponent with the god draws. I have the chalice on two and everything. 
but they still found their two jobs through Coco. Yeah, opponent London Mulligan to six. So let's see what kind of nuts combo deck they're on. Oh, they're on our deck. They're on our deck. All right, well, Cavern on Eldrazi. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Or are they on Black, White, Eldrazi, and Taxes? Thoughtseize. Yep, they're probably going to take our Chalice. They take our Displacer. They don't care about the Chalice. Alright, well, I'm about to Chalice on one. No more Thought Seizes or Paths for you. Double Thought Knot into Reality Smasher seems decent. Aw, oh, they found their Temple. Now they get to take our Dismember. That's a shame. Or do they take one of our Seers? I need a temple of my own. They take my thought nuts here. Ooh, I did find a temple, yes. All right, perfect. What you got? Sword, Solemn Visitor, Blight Herder. Do I have anything in exile? How do I already have something in exile? Oh, they, they took my thing with, uh... Wait, what? Oh yeah, they exile with thought nuts here. All right. I think I should take. They can't cast Soren. They're a, they're a land away from Blight Herder. They'd have to take two pains to play Soren. Probably Lingering Souls because they can't flash it back if I take it. And I can go dismember their Thought Knot and attack Soren if they go that route. See, I'm taking their Souls. And I have a I have Reality Smasher for next turn, so I can go all in at Soren. If they can get Blight Herder on, online, that'd be annoying, but it wouldn't just be game ending. So Chalice obviously isn't good here. Oh man, they found a Wasteland Strangler. At least that doesn't kill my Thought Knot, but it shrinks it so that they can attack in. But that won't stop me, because I'm still going to go in. Warping Whale. Alright, if I go in with with uh, Reality Smasher and Thought Knots here, I feel like they're going to um, just trade Thought Knots here. And I, I kind of really don't want that to happen. Um, counter Target Sorcery Spell. We know their hand. We know their hand. I think I'm just going to dismember their... Oh, you know what? I can ghost go to their Eldrazi temple. Ooh, that's pretty good. Alright, I'm going to dismember their Thought Knots here. Draw. Okay, we got the ape, so we can still cast our thing next turn. I'm going to Ghost Corner their Eldrazi Temple so they're still another land away from casting Blight Herder. Um, get in for four. And I'm still living up Warping Well just in case of shenanigans. Alright, they got Soren online. Yep. All right, Wasteland Strangler is assembled. All right, untap. Another Warping Whale. I don't like that card. I don't know why it's in here. All right, play Reality Smasher. Go to combat. Attack Soren for five. Not trade off my Thought Knots here. Soren's going to take it.
opponent found the mana for Blight Herder, and they don't have it online. They need to ingest three... Wait, two cards? Oh, they ingest two cards. How? Oh, Simeon Spirit Guide. Alright, well, that's a huge roadblock, but Double Warping Whale actually hits two things. Alright, well, I'm going in with uh, Reality Smasher. All right, I'll kill the I'll kill the blight herder. It's the most annoying. And I will go passing the turn and then end of turn I'll just warping whale one of their dudes and then I'll warping whale another dude on my turn and then get in. All right. Exile one of their scions. Go to combat. I guess I'm attacking. I, I really don't want to do this. But I guess so. Ooh, they don't do all three. They don't do all three. Thank goodness. Thank goodness they didn't block with all three. That's that saves us. That actually might make us win the game now. Thank goodness. When did y'all start playing Magic? Oh, I started playing Magic in uh, I think it was Scars of Mirrodin block. Yeah, it was a. Uh, it was in the War of uh, Mirrodin Phyrexia. It was at that time. My first pre-release, I think, was Avacyn Restored. Alright, let's get out Thalia. Alright, I think we got there. Opponent's little misstep there. Cost in the game. Alright, on to sideboarding. Bring in Worships. Bring in... Uh... Deck and Stone. Spyglass, Revoker, these feel good, but I don't feel like they're quite worth bringing in. Like, obviously, Revoker and Spyglass named Soren, but they probably only have like one or two Sorens. I like uh, Thalia Heretikathar here. Thalia Guardian of Thraven is probably cuttable. I like my Eldrazi's. Arbiter is probably not needed, actually. Ar Arbiter doesn't actually do anything. Warping Whale. I don't like Warping Whale, actually. Bring back in the Arbiters. You know what? Better than an Arbiter, probably a Revoker. And instead of this this Arbiter, do I just bring in Sorcerer Spyglass? Or a Ratchet Bomb? Uh, whatever. I think... Arbiter literally does nothing here. Literally, is just a bear. Maybe I just... But it works with our Ghost Quarters... I guess that's relevant. Alright, maybe we'll get that off. You started playing an in Innistrad? Yeah, that's that's close to around the time I started playing. Like, the first intro deck I ever bought was in... Oh, oh this is, um... That's a turn two thought knot? Yeah. Alright, well... Do I literally just keep this because of turn, turn two thought knot? I mean, I can ghost quarter one of their things. I can cast whatever I get. This is ultra supreme greed, I know, but you know what? Screw it. Get rid of a chef of dunes. So yeah, Dark Ascension is when I actually got my first ever intro pack. But before that, and like in the the Scars of Mirrodin block, I was actually just playing with, uh, thank goodness that was not a thought cease, by the way. I was just playing with like, like my brother's friend gave us some of his commons and his bulk. And so that's what we were kind of rocking out with. 
you just know that you're pulled your first Johnny and in your first pack. Oh dang. Why they why the opponent just concede? Why why was that a concession? Could they not deal with the turn three thought not? Well, they just did not want to handle. It. Oh, maybe. Okay, maybe their their hand was like not good, and that the our thought knots here was just literally gonna screw them. Maybe that's the reason why. All right. Well, you know, I'll take it. It was kind of a weird, awkward game, but you know, that was a mirror, and we came out on top. So I'm happy about that. But they're black white. Um, honestly, what? It's arguable what to say if black white or mono white is better. Black white gives you wasteland strangler, and that's basically it. You just flick your wasteland strangler, and you do get Inquisition and Thoughtseize, and you should run Vile and Flicker Wisp and Tide Hollow Sculler. That's just a whole other deck, though. I don't know. I've always wanted to play this version, so I'm, I'm hyped to play this a little bit more. See what we can do with it. Let's get another one. Yo, what up guys? Post-production Marin here with your typical per-video narration. So, I sped up this game because it was the longest game of the video. We end up going against Druid Vizier. We get Chalice out on one, hopefully that slows them down. We kill their first Duskwatch recruiter, or their first, uh, what do you call it, Devoted Druid, and luckily for them they had a second one, and they had the Vizier. So they got kind of a lucky draw. Uh, but we keep uh, resetting their Devoted Druid with our Eldrazi Displacer, so it keeps getting Summoning Sickness, so they can't go Infinite. But they find a Coco, and, and they find an Ewit off that Coco to get back the Coco. And they happen to have two Cocos on their upkeep, and then they find another Ewit and get Coco back again. So opponent's getting super lucky. And um, they end up courting for Viserysir, and they got the Finx Viserysir uh, Vizier combo online and gain infinite life. So we are just going to go ahead and scoop that one up. We go to the next game and bring in some removals um, and some uh, stuff to shut down Devoted Druid and Sorcerer Spyglass and whatnot. We get the turn one Chalice, so we play it so that they cannot play birds and stuff. They get the Devoted Druid. We end up killing it with Dismember. And um, from here, we're just uh, hoping to stall out with this Ratchet Bomb on two and prompt them to never play anything. So we thought not Seer them. We see their hand. They have a devoted, devoted Vizier in their hand, but they also got two cords. Uh, we end up taking a cord because we know that the Ratchet Bomb is threatening their two-drop combo, and we don't want them to have that tech like Knight of Autumn and whatnot. Uh, so we deck and stone the Finks because we don't want them to get their uh, Viserys Seer online because we know that they had the um, the cord. And so when they cord in response, we know they're about to try to get the Viserys Seer to try to catch us off guard. So we are forced to crack the Ratchet Bomb prematurely. And so that allows them to play the, the devoted Vizier that was in their hand sitting there. So they ended up being, to, being able to play around it and get there anyways. And here's the part where uh, they scry with Viserys here and they kept it on top. So we're like, okay, they obviously have a mana sink they scryed into to win. But we keep playing it out just so that we can force them to do it. And they ended up not having it for some reason. We were very, very, very confused. Uh, so we'll take it. We go into the next game. They get the turn to Vizier, our devoted druid, and we kill it. Uh, we deck and stone the um, Duskwatch Recruiter because we don't want it to get any activations. And right there, they're just a Finx away from comboing off, so we are forced to Warping Whale the Vizier. And at this point, we put the Chalice on two. And we're like, okay, we're good. We're, we're never going to lose now um, because they cannot play their combo. The only way they can find their combo is if they hit it off of Collected Company or Court of Calling. Um, so we take a good long look here with Thought Not Seer. We end up taking the Company because our thought process is when they cord at end step for the, the Vizier, because they have the Finks in hand. We kill the Vizier. And now they're left with, like, uh, Finks in hand and the uh, Viserys Seer, and all they need to do is find another uh, Coco or a Cord to get the Vizier to win. We end up beating down pretty aggressively, and they end up finding a Coco off the top to get the Vizier, and they play the Finks, and that's just nuts. We got another game here with, with uh, what do you call it? Eldrazi and Taxes. And we're on the play against Coda09. Ooh. That's a turn one chalice. But then we're kind of stuck after that. I can chalice on one and zero. Is that going to be good enough? I would need to top a land. I would cavern on humans and go Thalia into Thalia. Is that worth it? 
I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know how badly Chalice on one's gonna screw them over. I think I'm gonna mull, because we get London Mulligan. Uh, this hand does nothing. We're on the play. Yeah, I'm gonna mull. Okay, I'll keep this one, because that's a quick reality smasher. Uh, let's ditch... Ghost Quarter. And... Leon and Arbiter. And just go for the, the swift reality smasher. Turn two reality smasher and hope that gets there. London Mulligan is so nuts. It's insane. It's so wild. It feels so weird doing that. I mean, I I started playing Magic when mulliganing was normal. And then we went to Scry Mulligans. The, uh, what do you call it? Vancouver Mulligan? And now we got London, because London invaded. Okay, I don't have to take pain off that. Nice turn to Reality Smasher. So they are on either Spirits or Merfolk. They only got four cards left in hand. But let's see if they have a Reflector Mage to bring in. Or like a uh, Merfolk Trickster to slow me down. Alright, so given that their their user picture is Kiora, I'm gonna go ahead on say on a hunch that they're on Merfolk. I'm a little bit more familiar with Merfolk now that we played it with Nikachu, the Merfolk Master. And he told us the few things that we didn't know about Merfolk, so hopefully I can play around this a little bit better. They're going to have so much 3 threes and 4 fours that they're probably going to be able to block Reality Smasher. Yep, Silver Glee comes in. And they reveal a Silver Glee. Can I get a Thought Not Seer? Planes. That is not a Thought Not Seer. But you know what would be awesome? Chalice on 2. All right, I'm going to Canopy. Let's crack it now. Planes. That's exactly what I needed. Mem Memnarg and Grimgrin are your two commander decks you play the most. I most often... Right now I'm playing my Aloro deck a lot, but I would say that the deck I most often like... Switch Holy with. shit! Oh my god! Are you fucking kidding me? I wish I owned Paper Horizon Canopies. Yo, Drew, with the 25 again! It's like every stream! That's so... That's so nice of you, man. Thank you so much. I'm humbled every time. I'm unworthy. Thanks for the support. Yo, send me send me another deck list, Drew. Send me another deck list to play. I will happily play another one of your decks if you would like me to. That's that's super nice. I gotta have like a, a marination hall of fame. And Drew would be up there. We would have Phil, Drew, uh System forty two hundred. Uh, probably Onichan, it hurts. And, um, Taylor. Taylor would be there. So let's get in for five with the Smasher. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, the decks I play most often in EDH. Um, so, I, I s always like to... And every single day I play Commander, every single time I play Commander, I like to play my Luzun deck at least once. 
because that deck's really fun. It's a uh, it's my mono blue taking turns Stompy. Uh, Luzoon is really fun. Um, I also what else? I've been really hungry to play my Tatiava again, but I really only bring it out at GPs because it's not fair. And uh, also, my Selvala Heart of the Wilds deck is not fair either. Because it just like, alright, I'm going to play Selvala on turn 2, and on turn 3, my entire deck's on the battlefield. That's literally what it is. If nobody kills Selvala, it's like, okay, I'm going to invigorate, and then I'm just going to go off with Paradox Engine or whatever. I don't know, something like that. And then I just play Fatty into Fatty into Fatty into Fatty and just draw my entire deck with, like, Life's Legacy, Rich Cry's Expertise, Momentous Fall, um, Soul's Majesty. And just, like, I have so much fatties and just draw my deck and just play everything. Keep on tapping Silvala, make about 900 mana, play my whole deck into, the, into play, and then everybody just concedes. Okay, my Thalia can very well get eaten here, but that would just mean that my Reality Smasher is going to get blocked less. So I'm going to attack with Thalia. Yeah, we run on a budget of Drew donations, that's right. Drew just paid for decks for the month. Gameplay videos for the month, paid for by Drew, the RN. Yo. Tell Zoe and Charlotte I said hi, as usual. Merfolk Trickster, they are going to tap this guy, but they do have to discard a card. Wait, target of a spell or dispel or ability? A spell. Alright, so they can tap it. But we can still get in with Thalia. They can double block. And I'm okay with that, because that's just one less blocker for a Reality Smasher. They're just going to take it. A, um, I would really like a, whatchamacallit, Displacer here. Displacer would be pretty good. Yeah, he's a hero. Drew the RN has, um, I mean, I don't want to admit it, but probably kept me from having to sell more cards to pay for the channel. Because it's no, it's no secret, I mentioned it a lot of times, I've had to do that a lot. Ever since I started the channel, I've sold a chunk of my collection to pay for this channel. But then supporters like Drew, like Joe Money, like Angel, the one who submitted today's deck, Angel, um, it's people like that, that just like really make this more possible. So I'm super humbled every time that happens. Double Thalia, can you give me a creature I don't already have? And why do all of our opponents always play so dang slow? Like, I never, when, when I play on this channel, I never get remotely even close to timing out, except for that the last gameplay video with, uh, that was just uploaded today with, uh, with, uh, what do you call it, MTG Tavern. We actually almost timed out once. But I never really get close to timing out at all. Like, I'm playing the game, but all my opponents love to just sit there. Like, I don't know if they just got bad internet connection or what, but I know that feeling. If that's what's up, then then I know that feeling. Because uh, I know what life was like before I actually got fiber optic internet. Because when I didn't have fiber optic internet, Moto would lag so much. I would even, like, disconnect from Moto a lot. But now I have fiber optic internet, so... It's kind of expensive. 
it's like I, I mean, it's the only internet I've ever paid for by myself with my own money. So I don't know how, how much other internet costs. But yeah, it's not bad. It's like 70 a month. Yo, you're welcome, Dracovo. I'm glad you enjoy the content. Back on the topic of Commander, the next the next deck I'm building is Ramos Dragon Engine because I have so much playables in my collection for Commander that are just not being used in any decks um, because I don't have a deck that's in their colors. So I'm just like, screw it, build a five color deck and just throw in all the playables that I want. Because I want to play with, with Nico Bolas, I want to play with Maelstrom Wanderer, I want to play with... Um, Lord Wingrace's Judgment. I want to play with Lord Wingrace himself. I want to play with Maelstrom Pulse. I want to play with uh, Mirari's Wake. I want to play with um, Gisela. There's so many like multicolored cards that I want to play with, but I don't have a deck for their colors. So I'm just like, screw it. Build five color. Put them all in. I want to play with Zakama. I want to play with my Ugin, which I got as a gift. All right, let's go to combat. Oh wait, let's hold control, hold control. Oh wait, they're just conceding. All right, cool, on to sideboarding. Bring in the warships. I don't think they can beat warships. Bring in the ratchet bomb for two and bring in declaration in stone. Let's cut warping whales and let's cut Lean and Arbiters don't don't really they don't have fetches, so it's whatever. Um Phyrexian Revoker can actually name um Aether Vial, so bring in Revoker cut the Arbiters. And I guess we try like that. Yep, yeah, sure. Over warping well, I'd much prefer like spatial contortion. I think it kills stuff a lot better. Okay. Um that's uh, Chalice of the Void on two, if we can get one more source of mana. And if we can get white mana, we can deck something and Eldrazi displaced her. I need to get one more land, though, but we got 25 lands and we're on the draw, so I'm going to keep it. There's a vial. Can I get a revoker? Alright, there's a temple. So that's a turn to Reality Smasher again, if I can if I can get to that. Just don't spreading seize me here. That would be annoying. That'd be obnoxious as a gear hulk. You wanna play original duels? Your bloody your buddy plays Ramos Super Friends and it's busted. Yeah, but I don't wanna play Super Friends. I just wanna play five color whatever I own. Just five color trade binder. Like I said, Gisela, Zakama, Marari's Wake, Nico Bolas, Maelstrom Wander, Lord Wingrace. I just want to play a bunch of shenanigans. Just a bunch of stuff. Alright, I could save the Simeon Spirit Guide to Chalice on two next turn, but the fact that they have Aether Vial kind of turns me off to that. So I'm just going to go for Reality Smash. Turn two reality smasher seems good. Turn two five five haste. I've done many two two turn two five five haste in my days because uh, back in the day I used to play storm entity. I should definitely play storm entity on the channel again, but the fact that get probes banned probably probably stops that dream because that deck kind of relied on get probe. You wish you had that many playables, you just collect them over time, trade for them. Um. 
All right, dismember's good. So I can deck and stone their silver gill, their Meryl Regery. Yeah, let's do that. And then I can just dismember something else. Oh, please, Vile and a Phantasmal Image to copy it. <laughs> Alright, get him for five. Pass the turn. Island. Nice mismatched island art. A benthic biomancer paid an extra for a second one. Imagine if I chalice on one. Okay, well, I think I want to leave up this dismember. There's a planes. Um, alright, so... Let's go attacking first. Let's see if they want a triple block. Alright, sure. I'll let them trade off. I'll I'll take this three for one. Yeah, I'll take this three for one. If they want to vial in a lord here, then I can dismember the lord and just four for one or four for two them, and then just play a displacer and go in from there. Yeah, I feel like they definitely have a lord to vial in here. I'm not gonna take the bait. I'm not taking the bait. Yeah, that's fine. Play displacer. And to stop any future uh, Benthic Biomancers, I should just... Uh, so they also have Vapor Snag, so I'm just going to Chalice here. Chalice on one. Pass the turn. Lord, yep. Let's see if they got the, the Master. Master of Wavis. Master of Huevos. <laughs> they got the Master of Huevos. They're not getting in. Alright. One, two, three, four, five, six. Alright, so we have double Displacer Activation plus Dismember Up. Alright, let's do it. Flicker that guy. <laughs> Trickster. Alright, I'm going to dismember Lord. I just tapped. I still have another activation up. They didn't even crack their clue, sure. I'm cool with them not cracking their clue there while they had the mana up to do so. I feel like our opponent's playing very suboptimally. Maybe they're new to Merfolk. Telling by their 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 choice of basic lands and the fact that they didn't crack the clue there. And just the way they're playing overall, I just feel like they're probably either new to magic or new to merfolk. Uh, yeah, let's crack the canopy. Ooh, thought knots here. All right, well, I can force them to to play their cards here.
Oh, they're 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 playing cryptic. Oh, okay, yeah, they're playing a Nikachu. Nikachu variant. They're probably gonna go counter draw. I don't think they counter bounce. Oh, well, they do counter bounce. Okay, that's fine. I feel like with the cryptic variant, you're heavily relying on having a turn one Aether Vial. That's a problem. But with the London Mulligan, you can get the turn one Vial anytime you want it. Any deck that runs Aether Vial is now going to be super nuts with the with the London Mulligan. So I should definitely play a London Mulligan. I, was, I should definitely play an Aether Vial deck when London Mulligan comes out. But I've been having so much success with the deck that I'm on, Legion Siege. Legion Siege has been great. Yeah, I like Phil that the, the mulligan's gonna shift the meta so hard. It's gonna be nuts. Alright, play Thalia, pass, and we'll just uh, blink something and dismember something and then just go in. We can only actually do one or the other. It'd be too risky to block with Thalia here if they attack with the Trickster. Just in case they have another Cryptic Command. But since they don't run uh, Master Waves, that's, that's a good sign because that's like one of the scary cards. Yeah, Mutavolt suits up. All right, now they don't they don't actually have mana. They don't have mana to pay for um Crypt of Command. So, I think I'm okay with blocking here cuz they don't play Deprive in this list. I think they play Wizards Retort though. Yeah, I think they play Riz Wizards Retort. So I am going to block. Yeah, let's block the Mute of Alt. If they want to flash in a Lord, I can just blink. We'll take three. They do have a Wizard's Retort in hand. They revealed that because of this scenario. If if they're a smart person after all, then this attack makes sense if they have a Wizard's Retort up. Alright, now we'll go for the Dismember and you'll see that they do have Wizard's Retort up. So there, pay for life. Oh wait, no, no, no! Don't, don't use Ghost Quarter. Here comes the Wizard's Retort. They didn't have it. Wow. All right. Well, I think we got it. Trickster. Alright, well, we're still going to put them in lethal range here. We can go Ghost Colder, their Mutavault, plus uh, Flicker, one of their dudes, and that should keep us alive, and then we just untap Flicker, their dudes again, and then attack. 
They're down to zero cards left. They literally have a top deck, a creature here, or something good, like another trickster, to be able to have a way to win. Or if they topped another lord, they actually win. If they top the lord, they exact has got it, because we have to take a pain off of our off of our canopy. Why are they not drawing any more one drops? Like where's their other benthic biomancers and their vapor snags? Come on, opponent. You got eight minutes left on the clock. We have 16. Where are you at? Okay, well, since they didn't since they didn't use their Muta Vault there, I can go ahead and use my Muta Vault to flicker. Alright, what you got coming in? Alright. Flicker. We alive. And now you got zero cards left. I flicker your block. I ghost code your muta vault. I flicker your master, and that's the game. So yep, we got there. Barely. I think what they're hoping for is that we accidentally tap horizon canopy and kill ourselves. I think that's what they're hoping for. I think they're hoping to get the the jank MTGO win. Hoping their opponent gets screwed over with uh, MTGO. That's what they're hoping for. Oh, well, that does it too. But we're not going to reveal that. We don't have to. So, Flicker the Lord, Ghost Court of the Muta Vault, and that's the game. And nice, we got there. And now, all they're hoping for is for me to skip through my combat step. But nope, we got it. Alright, opponent, you're not going to try to use Moto to screw us over this time. And we got there. Nice. We got another win. We ended up with a grand total of three wins. Alright, let's update the record real quick before we start the outro. So Eldrazi and Taxes, obviously with the London Mulligan, it helps the turn one chalice a lot more. But the turn one chalice actually wasn't too good today. Wasn't too good at all. Um, I don't think we found any matchups where that, where that was super game winning. In most of these matches, chalice on two was better. Like what if what if somebody built a deck where we're meant to chalice on two? And we just play one, three, and four drops, and just nothing on two, and then just like wait to chalice on two like that that would be interesting because usually people build decks where you chalice on one and just play all two three and four drops because that seems like a more consistent curve but what if it was the other way around because chalice on two just felt so much better today but we would need some hyper ramp like we need but you would be able to because you'd be able to run birds hierarch and then simian spirit guide so you can turn two chalice and also gemstone caverns in addition to that just Make turn two chalice as consistent as possible. I should probably brew a deck that's built to do that. You can also chalice on zero if you need to, obviously. Just like Utopia Sprawl Arbor Elf, and that, that's a turn two chalice. Or just, um, you know, Utopia Sprawl Simeon Spirit Guide, that's a turn two chalice. Um, yeah. Anyways, this deck, I've been wanting to try it for a very long time, like a year or two. And um, yeah, this deck has always interested me, but. Um, from playing it today, I honestly have to admit, I didn't have the most fun playing it. Now that I finally played it, I learned that I, it's, it's, it's interesting, it's an interesting deck. I love Chalice of the Void, but honestly, it wasn't as fun as I thought it would be. Um, but still, thank you very much to Angel Cruz for submitting the deck, I really appreciate it. And thanks again to Drew for the 25 big ones. I'll rate this deck a 5 out of 10 on funness. It still is a taxes deck, and me love me taxes. I love I love playing some taxes. Um, it's like what I like to do in Commander. It's what I like to do in Modern. I would say I'm a stacks player. Uh, I, I hate to admit it. I, I don't play hardcore stacks in Commander, but I just like to make sure combo players don't win. 
because I hate combos in Commander. That's why I gotta make sure they don't. I hate combos in Commander, and I hate combos in Modern, and I just hate combos in general. I'm not a fan of degenerate combo decks, so I gotta run stacks to make sure the combo player doesn't do what they want to do. That's all I'm trying to do. That's all I've ever intended to do. But in terms of stacking fair players into Oblivion with, like, Back to Basics and Hall of Gemstone, that's not me. Um, but yeah. In terms of goodness, these kinds of decks are always pretty solid. I'll give it a 6.5 out of 10. I've never found these decks difficult to beat. Every time throughout the past, whenever I go up against Eldrazi and Taxes, I've always find it to be a really easy matchup on whatever deck I play. Um, but usually I play green-white, and green-white I think has a really good shot against uh, these kinds of decks because green-white uh, plays beefier dudes than what this deck can spit out. And when you can out-beef the beef then I think it's really good. But if they get the Displacer online, that's when it's annoying, because if I use my path early, or if I, like, they have a Thought Not Seer, do I really want to path the Displacer? I could draw a card, and then I make that mistake every time. And when you let the Displacer sit there, you're in some trouble if you're a creature-based deck. Like, you gotta kill the Displacer. You gotta kill it quick. You cannot let the Displacer sit, or it's just gonna take the game over. So... Whenever I do lose to this kind of deck, it's because of Displacer and only Displacer. Nothing else I care about. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't know what I would change from the, I mean, I think I would change Warping Whale, honestly. I don't like Warping Whale at all. Um, I'm not a fan of Warping Whale. I, I don't think it's a very impactful card. I just feel like it's very, it's very needy. Like, you need them to cast a sorcery, specifically a sorcery, which is probably the least casted kind of spell. Like, what do you, what sorceries do you have in modern besides Thoughtseize and Serum Visions? Like, Supreme Verdict can't be countered. Um, they're probably going to be able to Miracle Terminus and hold up a counter spell. Um, I don't know, Anger of the Gods you don't see too often anymore. Oh, yo, Phil wants to donate. Oh, yo, to donate, you can go to, um, I should probably put a link in the description on, on YouTube, but in Twitch, if you scroll down to the panels, there's actually a donate panel, or you can just press, uh, type exclamation point donate in the chat, and, uh, yeah, a link should come up. So, yeah, that, that's how that works. The sideboard, um, I, I mean, honestly, I would have really loved a way to destroy, Artifacts and enchantments, like Fragmentize, but Fragmentize doesn't work with uh, Chalice, so probably like Disenchant or some kind of Naturalize effect, because that's something that I really wanted in these matches, like against the, uh, the, uh, it would have been nice to be able to kill the stuff out of the prison deck, and there was another, there was another matchup where I really wished I had Naturalize effects, I forgot which matchup it was, but Naturalize effects is something I really wanted in here, it, it really kind of, screwed us over a bit that we didn't have them. To call the honor guard was kind of a non with thought nuns here, but again, humans decks are going to start being around a lot more with the Aether Vile, because the London Mulligan is here, so uh, humans will start going to be a very a very um, obnoxious thing once again. So to call the honor guard is going to be pretty good, so pick up your copies of this card. Um, anyways, I don't think I have anything else to say about it, so um, we're going to wrap the video right there. Thank you very much for Thank you very much for watching. Hit that like button if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you're new for the Jankiest the Gameplay every other day. And let me know what deck you want to see for a future episode of Fan Fridays. You can go ahead and leave them in the comments, or email me, or DM me on social media, wherever I can see your comment, and you might just see your deck played on a future episode of Fan Fridays. Go check out the social media in the chat, the link to Twitch there as well if you want to catch one of these live streams. We currently stream Magic the Gathering gameplay three times a week. And thank you very much to all my patrons. And if you want to become a patron as well, link is down below. And that's about it. We're going to get on out of here. Thank you guys very much for watching. And we'll catch you in the next video. Peace.